Welcome. This is the May 2nd Beehive Production user call. We have Andrew, John, Hans, Patrick, and myself, Michael, so far. And hey, BSD Can is less than a month away. It There is still time to, to attend, to sponsor, to register, to be a part of it. So you can find out more at bsdcan.org. And while there hasn't been a formal announcement, the OpenZFS production user event, which needs a name and developer summit will be at the end of October in Portland, Oregon of all places. And I received the sweetest email that was completely accidental in so far as Tim is like, for some reason appears that the production user calls are still happening for the website, but few videos have been uploaded, like kind of a bug report. Like, yeah, I've been busy. I got a bunch up uh, last night and this morning, but I'm glad we have an audience. And if you're in Illinois, Andrew has a bunch of four post racks with outsides and backs and fronts and doors and stuff, but they're the square ones, not the threaded ones. So if you want some of those for free, reach out to Andrew, who is on the CC, reach out to me if you can't find Andrew, and hey, uh, those are available to you. And John D, you had a question about passing through NVIDIA GPUs, broadly or a specific model. So I have access to some newer GPUs. I've got some L, an L40 and a H100, and I am, I brought up uh, uh, 14 uh, stable, which is now in uh, 14.1 pre-release status, and the I can bring Beehive up, put the you know do the PPT dev for the the device. Um, <clears throat> and I can pass it through to a Linux VM. Uh, specifically, I happen to be doing a uh, Rocky uh, 8.7 or a Rocky 9.3, and I can install the NVIDIA CUDA drivers, and uh, immediately upon trying to do an NVIDIA SMI to read out the card, um, it, it dies. It does not work and says there's, there's no card there. Um, there are no error messages on the FreeBSD side. The If I look at the Corvin repo, I do see that there is one diff that is sitting in the PCI uh, pass-through arena uh, in the Beehive uh, code where he has a static variable sitting in the code where he does some bar zero work. Um, I did take that, I took, extracted that patch from the code and tried it, but it did not make a difference. Um, and part of my issue is I do need to run more than one, uh, eventually I need to run more than one GPU. So the, the patch as is wouldn't work for me. I need to I would need to take that patch. The, the the bar zero work he's doing needs to be kept on a per device basis eventually. Um, I'm just wondering: is anybody running a a, a reasonably current uh, NVIDIA GPU? And if so, what version of FreeBSD are you using? Did you apply patches? Did you have to do anything special, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Um, that's that's my question. Did you try 13 for what it's worth? I'm sorry? Did you try FreeBSD 13 for what it's worth? I have not tried 13 yet. Okay. Um, got it. Uh, and have you reached out to Corvin directly? He's relatively responsive. And I, I have not. Okay. Uh, it never hurts. I want, I was trying to, I was radar. trying to, yeah, I was trying to do a little bit, I was trying to do all of my legwork up front so that when I did contact him, I hopefully had all my I's dotted and T's crossed. What a good citizen. Uh, Hans, Hans. Cool. Uh, others, I'll let you jump in. That's who I'm missing, Young. Jan, you had some comments a second ago. Are you muted? You are muted if you're trying to do your thing. So yeah, I wanted to oh. try this out in case I get it wrong. Uh, oh, hello, there it is. So uh, I last tried this in, I think, 2019, shortly after EuroBSDCon, uh, using the tips and tricks recommended in the uh, talk about GPU pass-through at that conference. 
the slides uh, with the notes should still be uh, online on the conference website. And uh, if not, it, the video is on YouTube. Um, what uh, it worked, but the quirk was that because uh, I didn't uh, give the card a copy of its uh, BIOS uh, to uh, initialize itself. And because Beehive doesn't uh, emulate the IO port, VJ, low level stuff uh, to really time travel from the 16 bit era into uh, modern times during the first few milliseconds of hardware initialization. So uh, because of that, the GPU isn't in the state it normally is when the driver attaches. And because of that, you had to uh, specify the guest PCI ID, uh, basically uh, bus slot uh, fun card function or something. Uh, in the XORG driver configuration for the NVIDIA driver, and then it would just work. Um, I didn't run into major issues. Uh, I used it to prove that the, I could play Steam games with reasonably normal frame rates uh, with Linux Steam. Uh, yeah, but, um, and the firmware got similar tests, but, uh, yeah, with Windows, I couldn't get it working because I haven't found a way to really tell the Windows driver which PCI ID to look closely at, if it could be an NVIDIA GPU. And supposedly for it to auto-detect it correctly, you would have to uh, add emulation for the IO port video setup to pretend to be a PC uh, XT or something during the first few instructions. So I am I am explicitly doing uh, LLM work. I'm not using it for graphics. Um, but you still the, need the driver to attach. The driver attaches correctly. I can see the card with LSPCI. But when I actually try to do anything with the card it is when it fails. Um, mm -hmm. I have not tried to do anything with any Intel CPUs. Um, and I, in theory, I'm not supposed to have to do anything with the firmware. It, the firmware is not required for this utilization. Oh, interesting. Um, uh, I've, it's, it's not. I've read at the time uh, in Linux KVM firms that you really have to basically for the GPU to go oh, into a, a usable state. You had to um, basically start XORG once, and then you could run it headless. Oh, interesting. Because the driver would initialize the GPU. Otherwise, it sits in an uninitialized state after the function level reset when it gets passed through. So it's basically in a state where the driver normally doesn't recognize it. That's just vague memories from four or five years ago. Um, and it could have changed, of course, because that's a seldom tested uh, part of pass through. Normally people pass through network cards and storage cards right. and not GPUs. Um, although for Alan Jude, that was one of the earliest uses of Beehive for him because there was always like the one card for encoding video and Bless his heart mm -hmm. early on. Uh, uh, John, I've got some suggestions when you have, when everyone else has spoken. As a side note only, you just mentioned someone else's name. Um, I run large NFS servers where I, the actual NFS server is a Beehive VM, and I use PCI pass through to pass the Broadcom. Uh, HBAs directly into the VM. I use PCI pass through to pass uh, and uh, um, Mellanox cards directly into the VM. Um, and the the stuff the the tech for this does seem to be working. Um, I don't know how familiar people are with the 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 larger uh, newer. NVIDIA 
GPUs, but they have onboard RAM, onboard memory. And if you look at them, they require a, uh, a secondary bar uh, for the larger, I'm going to get this wrong, for the larger than 32 uh, meg uh, or 16 gig stuff. And the cards uh -huh. I'm looking at have 80 gig on them. And I believe <laughs> if you if you look at the output of LSPCI, you can see where the card is going to require a, uh, a 100, it's going to request a 128 gig hole in the memory uh, map. I and anyway, I my feeling is I think that's where the problem is, but I don't know for sure. Uh, that said, when you say memory, do you mean the video memory, or is it got some other co-processing processing nifty memory? The Nvidia one of the Nvidia cards that I have has eighty gig of memory on board. Video memory, I'm guessing. It, yes, what you okay, would consider video yeah, okay. memory. Yeah. As modern cards, who knows? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, on GDPR uh, 6X something. Right. Fast, fancy fast. Uh, one quick thing, John. Uh, I, I can did reach out to uh, uh, ba -ba -ba -da Gosh from uh, BSD Now Network Developer about the the MAC address dynamic allocation on on SRIOV devices. Yes, sir. Excellent. Uh, yeah. So, uh, but the, what the heck's his name? I'm drawing a blank because I'm also trying to tell you. Here is a neat trick. Now, what I'm doing in testing Corvin's GPU work on Intel, I bare metal boot the system with the OS of choice with a small, say, 32 or 64 gig. Uh, at a little USB drive, I completely update Windows, not that you're running Windows, and then make sure that all the proper drivers are installed under the desired OS on the desired hardware, and then I CAMDD that off and boot it as a virtual machine so that I've, I guess I found in Taipei that trying to add Intel drivers manually especially after the VM is booted with this pass through and it just never quite works happily. And sometimes there's competition between the, uh, the UEFI flame frame buffer driver. So just going fully native and then backing off was helpful such that you might want to take a machine with that card. That's probably easier with a discrete card rather than built in graphics. I am actually Good. doing almost exactly what you're Excellent. asking okay. right Good. now. You've you've um, gone down that road. I if if you will check the chat, I just oh, uh, posted the LSPCI output of Excellent. the physical the bar that I'm referring to. Cool. Um, how much time have you already spent digging through the UEFI settings for the uh, PCI root complex configuration? Because oftentimes it's hidden away the under names like above 64 gig decoding or a large bar, huge bar, um, 64 bit something, uh, or mm, bundled with the PCI minimum revision settings. It's a mess. Uh, and if the hardware isn't handed off to the operating system correctly, you probably just going to uh, lose trying to fix it up later. So you asked a number of questions there. Um, I have spent a relatively large amount of time going through uh, both the uh, Beehive um, uh, PCI pass-through support. I have read a large number of UEFI-based uh, articles talking about this type of subject. And I have been going through the actual Linux drivers trying to understand exactly what they're doing also. Um, I would love to tell you that this is all very straightforward, well-documented, and right. understood. 
And what I'm going to tell you is that I cannot read two articles that actually present the same information. Um, I know and, your pain. Yeah. And uh, um, the, and the NVIDIA side of it is not well documented. Um, and it, it, it's so there's a lot of, uh, um, Do you? there's a, Sorry. there's a lot of magic wand. There's a lot of magic wand waving as, as you, as I try to figure out what's going on and um, what, what, what's going on versus what isn't going on. And I'm actually getting ready to hook. I'm, I'm about two thirds of the way done right now, setting up a Linux system where I've already tested these things natively. They work just fine. Okay. I'm getting ready to, I'm in, getting ready to in, get QEMU built um, and then run a Linux system, put, put these things in pass through mode, pass them through QEMU into yet another Linux system and make sure that it works there. And that's your native versus hypervised image, Michael, that you were asking yep. me about a moment ago. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I have more images floating around that I can tell you what to do with. Um, so the answer to your question, Jan, is um, specifically, I don't know if I answered your question, but I have definitely spent a lot of time uh, trying to work through this and figure out what works and what doesn't. And I will also say there's a lot of incorrect information out there. Um, you know, the concept of technical debt, the, there's stuff out there that worked a few years ago or, or didn't work a few years ago, but then it's been changed. And I have spent a lot of time looking through Corvin's uh, patches and the updates um, and his reviews and things that people have said or not said uh, about, that, about that particular uh, code. Um, so I, I will. I, I've been talking a long time here. I'll I'll stop and let other people chime in. Um, John, do you have access to a low to mid range gaming card uh, of a similar generation with, let's say, uh, four to uh, eleven gigs or twelve gigs of memory? So you are st you stay below sixteen uh, and can try that. This card works. Do I have access to something? Um, sort of. It's in use, and I would have to pull it, and that's not going to go over well right now. So the answer is actually no. I don't have any smaller cards that I can go pull and use right now. Just uh, some. The, yeah, the oldest you can cannibalize yeah. for. Uh, yeah. If you are for a day or so. Yeah. The oldest cards I have access to would be some older uh, P100, V100 uh, level cards. How much RAM do those have? Uh, 16. Which core, okay. what, which core are they based on? Oh, I don't know the specific CUDA uh, configuration that they have. What's the equivalent desktop card? Is, oh, I have... I have... I have I have absolutely no idea. So I, uh, I, I'm going to plead ignorance here. I don't deal with desktops. I don't. I, I barely know anything about desktop GPUs. Um, almost all of my work is with the, the back end systems uh, with large language model uh, work. Um, I've, I've got guys out here that are running jobs that, that spend weeks and weeks or months trying to get these things working and trained and. Um, so, yeah, it's fun. Uh, I'm just looked it up. The P100 is, uh, is quite dated. It's from 2016. Uh, it's based on uh, the Pascal generation. Yes. And that should be da, 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 uh, Pascal. Uh, so that should be about the vintage that I had rocking. So if you could get those working, you know that at least nothing GPU specific has completely rotten away. But of course, they're not no longer uh, interesting from a performance per watt perspective. Yeah, that's going to. No, they're right. they're that's not. And hard, they're that... heavily memory limited, of course. To the but... Pascals are the ten series. So if you want to, yep. I mean, if you wanted to test like an eight gig 
desktop card just for testing purposes, you can get a 1080 for 60 bucks. The 1080 Ti is what I was using in 2019 and it worked. But uh, because I didn't have a secondary GPU for FreeBSD to use for my desktop, it was so annoying to have to do it. And back then there were issues with DevCTL detaching from the card at runtime and so on. So basically I kind of had to reboot anyway. Yes, and then I could just directly boot into the gaming SSD instead of passing it through. And yeah. So uh, thinking out loud, we might be due for a PCI pass through hackathon. I've I've got a machine just laughing at me that I had to step away from a week or two ago for other reasons, but something like that might be good insofar as we just set out a few things to try and help each other out. So does it mean that uh, Corwin's uh, GPU password patch is still on integrated? Uh, they are integrated and I have been uh, trying them and it does have some pretty specific requirements on Intel generation. Yes, it so does. It's like I do have a 9500 i5 that seems really similar to what he has. He has like the T or E model, but that's the most promising. I just haven't had a moment, unfortunately. Getting there. Getting there. So yeah, um, uh, build a list of what you specifically want to get working and maybe we set aside a time and say, hey, let's just pound our heads collectively against this. So what I would really want to uh, like to see is documented reproducible steps and stability testing of administrative commands. So basically rebooting your virtual machines, uh, reconfiguring stuff so that you make sure that it, it works more than once because yes, I've had it indeed. in the past that it works once per cold boot and then exactly. the hardware is in a state. For example, with a cheap little Intel uh, E350 uh, Nick, I had to patch the driver to basically, uh, instead of bailing out when the registers aren't in the expected uh, reset state, just do a second uh, function level reset. And then it worked. Like four lines of diff and I sent it to a mailing list at the time, but uh, yeah. This kind of stuff is certainly very under-tested. And I've had the experience, especially with Intel network drivers, that it works most of the time, but tends to, what if they, basically they have a new NIC, so they stop testing on the last two generations and just hack on the driver and then throw it over the uh, fence with a few weeks before the code freeze. Yeah. Um, at least we get a driver, but it's really annoying to think out, okay, so the old driver works, and new driver it doesn't work, this kind of stuff is. Or okay. guidance on how to detect the hardware limitations, like how many interrupt swing buffers and so on do you have, how many uh, descriptors per ring, so basically to, how can you find out what's a reasonable limit, for example, for a network card on how many virtual machines you can run on it with mm -hmm. virtual functions before uh, it becomes a bottleneck. Yep, please build this that list stuff. collectively in the back of your heads because, it, yeah, it, it's almost a mixed blessing that Corbin's been doing so much work that, you know, there are things that suddenly work and then occasionally suddenly things that don't work and let's just stay on top of it especially tracking stable on various branches. So there you have it. And yes, one thing I would like to see is to default to using DevCTL instead of LoaderConf to- Amen. Uh, and uh, there was this brilliant moment where Corbin was yep. like, wait, you can do that? <laughs> like, yes, you can do that <laughs> here. Uh, would be- So if we can just get those MAC addresses to be dynamic, DevCTL is the, is the perfect answer. Amen. And I'd love to know, can you, you know, 
detach and reattach a device a hundred times sequentially safely or what what weirdnesses happen so and which what could be order, done. Um, because the question is what do you do with uh three is four uh, reset uh, attach detach uh attach a different driver there are been different states uh, you can go through uh, yep, so you really exactly Oh, so, and timing, of course, matters because there's hardware involved. Yeah, it could be that if you wait a second, it works. If you do it uh, in a uh, on the shell uh, manually, interactively, everything works. And then you put it in a shell script, and suddenly uh, it panics because oh, yeah, the hardware is not yet done or something like that. Happened only once to me, but uh, yeah, I don't want to have to guess where the race conditions are, uh -huh. those should be fixed. I can't disagree with that. I have a lot of sleeps in my code. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes, yes, yes. After you've been slapped around by a PCI card once or twice, you just don't do it anymore. Yes, and there was even a moment there where the uh, destroy required a sleep before reinitializing a VM, but then I think John took care of that. Thank you, John. Anyway, yes, um, tentatively, who knows? Maybe and we set aside some time next week. John, if you're going to be around, right. just say, hey, it's a hackathon. We possibly record it, and people have somehow loved that stuff, and that's been the most popular content yet. Go figure. Yes, and yes John. if you're testing networks and storage cards, make sure to test them with load when detaching them because a lot of the crashes happen when you have packets in flights or uh, command uh, buffers and SCSI in flight while you're detaching the driveways because that's just an invitation to have a dangling pointer. It used to be, for example, this has been fixed and is one of the reasons why we finally have the image working mostly, uh, as in you can use it in production. Um, the problem was that for the longest time, each M buffer had back pointers to the packets, uh, to the network card it came in and it's supposed to be go out to. And then if you destroy the network interface while there are cute packets, suddenly you chase uh, <laughs> dangling pointers in the kernel heap and everything uh, explodes. Interesting. And that, of, of course, the reason for that was that by the back then that data structure was designed, nobody was thinking about hot plugging hardware. You had to recompile the kernel to do that. To change. But um, this is, hasn't been the case for decades. And so now basically if you want to learn if it's reliable to and safe to do it under load, you really have to provide an artificial load before Indeed. you do a detach. Uh, of course, you would probably didn't wa wouldn't want to use a ZFS or UFS file system on top, maybe something like Fire on a character device or uh, iPerf on an egg, so just an artificial load which uh, doesn't uh, cause problems when you kill it. But you need this kind of artificial load to uh, test realistic worst cases. Amen, and developers are notorious for testing things in a perfectly sanitary lab environment, just saying. Make sure it works in the clean lab state without load first, and when it does, uh, add the noise, basically, and the, yes, the load. Exactly. Uh, John, do you think you're able to attend next week, perhaps, or a little longer time? Uh, uh, possibly, um, okay. I will uh, definitely try. I, my, um, this just, my schedule has been really, really hectic recently. You too, huh? It's just the way life is. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Um, if you want to include it in the, in your documentation here, I'll email you a full, um, uh, LSPCI output of a sample card. Okay, sure. And, uh, to that point, I found that scripting things for testing Corvin's work was critical. So yeah, to make it reproducible, uh, will preserve your sanity to a greater extent. Oh yes. Okay. Agreed. 
that's probably plenty about PCI pass through. Uh, Daniel, can you talk? Or are you on a cool subway in New York getting a nice hot dog or something? Uh, hey. Hello, um, Daniel. Have you done any PCI pass through? Oh, all kinds of PCI pass through, and it sometimes works. Oh, cool. Anything with GPUs, specifically NVIDIA? Uh, well, I think I mentioned, this might have been last week or the week before, I mentioned there was a, a GPU for the purpose of, um, you know, uh, an ML uh, GPU, not, uh, not really a, a one for, you know, desktop stuff. That's but... what John is doing. Yeah, and I couldn't, I could not get it. it. It wouldn't, it would detect it. It saw it, but then Linux wouldn't, wouldn't chat with it. That's exactly what... it, perhaps. So, what model do you recall, and what Linux? So, let me see. It was, it was ancient Ubuntu, and okay. this is a, this is a VM that I, I, um, it, it, it was a VM from VMware that was working with VMware's uh, PCI pass through. Oh, so that's why. So, so it is a, it is a, yeah, it is, it is a, um, it is a place to test the the exact, you know, one to one between VMware and, nice. and Beehive, and it didn't, it didn't chatter with it. I, I actually have it, and I think that, I think the client is going to retire pretty soon, so we can we can hop on that. And, did, and check uh, it out. Maybe did I did you say you had, did you say you had it working under VMware or not? If you it, there it you does. have to, yeah okay you did you have to go into v, VMware and modify in the PCI settings? Um, you have to uh, add a uh, some a couple of bar entries for it. There's a knowledge base entry for this. Does that sound familiar? No, because I inherited the VMware. Ah, so okay. There might be something I'm missing, um, but I do have, I do have access to its twin. So, um, sorry, Michael Jackson. I'll just pass Michael Jackson. Um, so, uh, yeah, I have access to its twin that's still on VMware. So I should be ah. able to look up the settings that you're referring to. Um, yeah, I should I should be able to I should be able to see that. So, cool. Yeah, but but well, whatever whatever I'm doing, it, it does it does work in uh, yeah it do, it does work on VMware, and then the same exact clone, the same exact VM, does not see the device, or do, or it sees the device. It can't talk with the device in BI, but maybe I'm doing maybe I just made a mistake, and we could. We could try again, but I have that, I have that box, and we would be able to, we'd be able to test it. I could, I could probably have that arranged for next week if that would be something fun to play with. I'll let John I, answer that. I, I won't disagree. <laughs> awesome. So let's build that list. We, I actually, we do have a hackathon doc, and could update it. And actually, I think the puns need to be updated too. So that's like win-win. I'll get. I'll drop you that link shortly. Uh, boom! It's even open. Boom! 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 And while here, I do that, go ahead, John. Here's. I'm going to. Sorry, I have way too many Please. windows here. <laughs> I am going to paste the a knowledge base article here. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Um, perfect. This is from VMware. Yeah, I've looked. I referenced it, but not with a link. Ooh, good man. Um, and Michael, I'm forwarding you a piece of email right now. The output's rather long to put into a chat here. Okay. But my ask is that you, when you, if you want to paste it into your notes, yep. um, and you I'll will know that the resizable bar is huge. Interesting. Um, because these things are NV linked. Um, so anyways, here's, let me, okay. Oh, they have pretty pictures. Yeah, keep the scrolling down. Yeah. There's a step down here where it kind of becomes obvious. 
Post BIOS settings. There we go. Above four gig. That's <laughs> wait. GPUs once had four gigs. <laughs> yeah, old, but uh, four gig is thirty-two <coughs> bit physical addresses. Yep. And yep. if you see references to two hundred and fifty-six max, that's most likely the early proto uh, I/O MMU uh, called the AGP aperture window, yep. which was a way to barely have cards with up to two hundred and fifty-six megabytes. Uh, ex map through AGP before we had PCI Express, but PCI Express is compatible to that semantics, hmm. so that things just felt the same to operating systems. Okay. And so, but only uh, GPUs use this, and so that's why GPUs are unique when it comes to pass through these kinds of emulate the previous generation. It's not a generic PCIe function. Okay. It's a bunch of special workarounds to keep the semantics of the old earlier protocol around. And th those are just hardware limits. And mostly they're important during initialization. Memory reservation. Okay, cool. Uh, wait, what's VMware? I've never heard of them. <laughs> I'm a forget about I it. Know. Forget about it. Yeah. You don't want to have a nice knowledge base. <laughs> I'll take it. It's another word for Broadcom. Yeah. Um, okay. It looks like um, there are a bunch of reports I find about QEMO users where the uh, resizable bar uh, support works. Single GPU, but not multi GPU operation. It's even crazier when I I'm guessing QEMU KVM. Yes. Yes. Cool. cool. Uh, that said, uh, uh, Daniel, while we've got you, tell us about these nice bugs of yours. Which bugs? No, oh, last night's bugs. Nice what? bug. Didn't you give a talk last? Oh. Nice bug. How'd that go? Oh yeah, I uh, I did a super fun demo of uh, of my replication suite with recommendations on how I think CFS replication tools uh, should be, uh, or, or the principles that I think should be should be in all of them. And I gave a nice little beehive demo of uh, of creating all of the BSD family, uh, cloning them in beehive, and shipping them back and forth across the country a couple of times. And how ridiculously easy it is to, to do that and to with Beehive on the ZFS backend. Were there ZFS users in the audience? Um, yeah, there were a few. I, I think that uh, so a, uh, a bunch of kids from a class showed up who got oh, assi cool. an assignment to <laughs> who got an assignment to uh, check out a class, and apparently they wanted to see a ZFS class, so. Um, yeah, so it was nice. It was a nice audience. It was a you know a decent decent mix of uh, you know people new to it. I don't think there were a lot of Beehive audiences, but I feel like I should have done more to try to convert. But uh, uh, yeah, but it went went pretty well. I got good questions and stuff like that. And it sounds like Patrick recorded it, and should have a recording up soon. Yeah, I think it's I think it's I think it's up there. I only oh, made no several kidding. really egregious technical mistakes, um, which I will be correcting for my uh, BSD talk. Uh, here's the announcement, and hmm, and there's a recording. Uh, boom! So here is the general link with all the information and the recording link. So they're very very nice. And... I was pretty pleased. It came out really well. I will notify the wonderful people on the uh, OpenCFS channel. Cool. Great work. And as a buffer, I will give you that link to your own talk, and I will get it over there on my phone. Awesome. Any questions for... John or Daniel? Uh, Michael, if you don't mind, if you'll scroll up and look for oh, virtual, yes. look yes. for virtual resizable bar. Oh, please, yes. Uh, right, it's right there. 
Uh, it's right there. You just passed over down a couple lines. There you go. Physical and virtual. Got it. Yeah. Note the let, note the size of that virtual resizable bar that they report. Just one second. Um, Highlight uh, capabilities and yeah. Okay. Another question, right. which may be crazy. Uh, does is your hardware new enough that it may uh, come up with? Uh, 57 instead of 48 bit uh, uh, page tables? And have you tried uh, disabling 57 bit page tables if they are supported? Because those should only become relevant once you're past 250 uh, gig, no, uh, 256 terabytes or so of memory. Yeah, some some of the some of those some of those numbers there at the end, Michael, made me look at them twice. Yeah, me too. It's like, well, wait, petabyte, exabyte. Oh, good, you can have an eight exabyte bar. I'm glad someone's planning for the future. Goodness, <laughs> that is an interesting number. Can you grab for the number uh, fifty-seven in that? Uh... Uh, there's an address. Uh, hold on. Uh, some addresses, hex or uh, and those are just hashes. Page sizes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, no, sorry. Uh, okay. No, no, it's not helpful. EV. You've no. you wrapped oh, uh, twice now. Cool. Huh. Thanks. Goodness. Whew. So maybe that's helpful to somebody. Yeah. Or eye opening. Either way, I love it. Yeah. My goodness. Current size four gig. Up to eight exabytes. All righty. Anything about else technical depth? Yes. And uh, I found the old slide deck from Michael Chu. Oh, oh yes. uh, yeah. At UBSD Con 2019. Uh, yeah. It helped me back yeah. then to get it up and running. Okay. Uh, Michael C's classic talk. Yep. It's from 2019. Yeah. But, uh, Okay, and speaking of which, while I've got you, okay, I'm about to do this. And so, first, zoomy zoom. Do you mind posting that to the chat real quick? Uh, which one? That chat? Yeah, oh, yeah. That link? It's in it. That's where I got it. Oh, I didn't. Maybe chat's misbehaving. Or... No, my chat, for whatever reason, doesn't seem to scroll well. Oh, yeah. Um, it's It's whatever. I'll paste it again for what it's worth. Uh, no, it, right. it, it came through. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. And uh, if you want to rule out bit rot in the relevant driver code, maybe while it's still there, grab a FreeBSD 12.4. I know it's end of life, but just to make sure that it's not rotten array uh, in 13 or 14 and just nobody identified the point <laughs> where it fits. Yep. And setting the bus ID as what I had to do in XORG for it to work. OK, well, to kind of sort of force ourselves to do this, I am updating the hackathon doc. I am putting in the notes from the meeting. Uh, and here we go from the behind call. Oh. So yeah, go ahead and populate there. I'll drop the doc in chat. And uh, yeah, there are definitely some puns that need updating. We're only at 16 t-shirt quality puns. So yeah. Oh, that was a fun, fun one. OK. Andrea, uh, I've only proven the code is correct. I haven't actually uh, run it. A good old Knut's uh, quote. So anything else or speak now and forever hold your peace or whatever they say. Okay, well, uh, 
Also think about dragging out PCI devices if they're sitting in a closet and thinking about what perhaps nifty Hydro machine could have all kinds of cards and we just kind of step through them. All righty. I've got some fun ideas. You've got your homework. <laughs> Making them show up uh, uh, through a virtual uh, Thunderbolt controller. Exactly. Oh, I actually have one of those. <laughs> okay, Chris, M, you, you've added yourself. You are so disciplined. Okay, let's start the meeting over. Chris has joined. What you got? We are planning a PCI pass through hackathon. I don't know if you have any cool hardware to add to the mix, but be there or be square. Chris, you got anything? Um, actually, I um, I only got very little news. I uh, please. I started. Yeah. I started back. Uh, I started back uh, with with VM State D. Oh, nice. Yes. But, um, yeah, but but it's it's really just minor work that I've done. Um, but I haven't I haven't put it on GitHub yet. Um, but my next my next step that I wanna that I wanna complete is basically to um to uh, put some put some additional code and logic in so it can actually uh, select um, uh, tap and uh, console uh, devices. So that's the, that's the next milestone for the moment. Uh, NDM, what is, no, that's NMDM, NMDM. NMDM. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Too many acronyms. And M and M and M D M. Nine modem device. Yes. Mike. Delta. Yes. Yes. Mike. Or oh, November. Mike. Delta Mike. Delta Mike. Hmm. Danke. Okay. Chris, anything else? No, that's it for the moment. Yeah. Will we see you at BSD? Can you still have time to get butt over there? Unfortunately, no. Okay. Cool. Uh, what about next Thursday's PCI hackathon that we're kind of self-assigning here? Like, let's. Uh, oh, and the hackathon doc is up. I've got a little heading, and uh, our T-shirt slogan list needs to be updated. So there's that. Okay. Anything else, or we are good at a mere fifty-four after UTC. Heck, and someone suggested I don't bother with Pacific, but. That helps me track it. All righty then, Chris, you want to call it? Like and subscribe. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, everyone.